What's up guys, my name is Max and today I'm going to be taking you through how I make all of my decisions for the upcoming adventure trailer build. Um, so we're going to go through and talk about how I uh, came to this point to build the adventure trailer and how I made the decision on which features I was going to include with the build and uh, not include in the build. And so uh, this video doesn't have any fabrication in it. Uh, I just wanted to film something like this because I've gotten a lot of feedback from people uh, about wanting this kind of information. Um, and so I wanted to make a single video where we, we just sit down and talk about it uh, in order to kind of provide that information rather than trying to piecemeal it in through the different videos of the actual build. So um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, please feel free to leave me comments down below if you have any questions. Uh, and as always, uh, please hit the like button, subscribe, um, and I hope this is informative for everybody. So, uh, for those of you who have watched my channel in the past, you know that about two and a half years ago, a buddy of mine and I got a 40 foot uh, box truck, like a Penske truck, and we converted it into a five person full bathroom, kitchen, RV thing. And it was really cool in concept. It made a really great tiny house, but taking it on trips and adventures just didn't really work out. We only took it out five or six times in two years just because it was so big and so cumbersome to move. And it really only made sense if you had, you know, two, three, four, five people coming with me. Um, and just, just for myself, it was just a lot of work uh, where I was like comfortable just sleeping in my truck, you know. So, uh, the, so I basically sold it out of frustration because we never used it. Um, but the idea of having kind of an RV portable but self-contained kind of uh, sleeping kitchen system thing was really appealing to me because I do like to go on adventures. I do like to do off-roading stuff. I like to go to music festivals. And in general, I don't like camping. Like I've never been a big camping guy. And so the more comfortable I can make myself, the happier I'm going to be. So the next kind of logical step that I looked at was a van, converting a van um, to be kind of a mini RV type deal. Uh, vans have three significant problems of why I didn't feel they would work for me. Uh, the first is to build a van, it's ten to $12,000. Um, it, it would have cost me almost as much as it cost to build a box truck realistically. And vans can go off road. Yes, I know there's like the Quigley conversions and others, but you have a super heavy vehicle that's loaded down with all kinds of crap. Best case scenario, you can make it down some backfire roads, but you're not really going to take it uh, anywhere extreme. It's really a house on wheels as opposed to being an off-road rig. Um, and the third thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people who build vans want to do like the hashtag van life. I don't. I can't think of anything worse than living in a van on the side of the road. Like, I work a cushy 9-to-5 job, I have a nice house, I like sleeping in my bed. You know, when I go on vacation, I go on adventures, I go off-roading, I go to the beach, I go whatever, I want to go and enjoy, and I wanted a vehicle that um, basically helped me enjoy my vacations and make the most of them, rather than the vehicle being the vacation itself. Um, so, vans were out. Uh, the next logical thought was getting maybe like a slip-in truck camper, you know, that slides into the bed, because I do have a big three-quarter ton truck. But again, I can't really take my truck off-roading if there's, you know, a 4,000 pound camper in the bed. And then, like, what am I doing? Again, I it's basically van life, but it's even bigger and heavier. So I felt that that, was, that wasn't really a, a good a good use of resources um, or time. So what I wanted was I wanted something that was reasonably small, comfortable for myself or maybe plus one person, um, but could conceivably serve as a base camp for a few other people as well. And I wanted something that I could hook behind my truck, I could hook behind other people's vehicles, 
Uh, hopefully in the future, I'm planning on building a dedicated off-roading four-wheeling rig. Um, this trailer will go behind that. And so basically I came down to two options. Option number one was building a teardrop style trailer where you actually live inside the trailer. And option number two was what's really popular right now is these adventure trailers. Uh, Smitty Build sells one and for like five or six grand for just the base trailer, I believe. But you can find them, you know, upwards of $30,000, which is also preposterous. Um, and then on the teardrop side, you can spend anywhere from, again, four or five grand all the way up to like 50 grand for like a, a Brutus or whatever the hell it is. Um, and <clears throat> I thought about it. Honestly, I live in the South uh, here in Austin, Texas. Most of my wheeling adventuring is in the South, Southwest. Um, I deal with cold really well, a lot better than I deal with heat. And to me, uh, the... Um, the, the camper style uh, makes sense if you're uh, dealing with like a lot of snow and like really cold weather because you can really insulate those really well, the teardrops. But for me, uh, the rooftop tent seems like the much better idea. So I'm going to be placing an order with a Chinese company that makes a lot of the rooftop tents for some of the bigger manufacturers uh, directly and dealing with them and I'm gonna get you know a couple of awnings from them and a soft rooftop tent so it's the kind that folds out and looks like a tent but it's attached to a roof as opposed to like a hard shell or a clamshell tent. Um, so that's kind of the living conditions. I'm gonna basically just get the biggest tent I can get because they, um, you know, bigger is better I think in that case. And so it's gonna sit on top of this trailer. And so let me go through some of the key features of the trailer as I see them and kind of why I, I, I chose to have them. Um, so for the accommodations, we're gonna have a large rooftop tent on top that will be deployable at base camp. I'm gonna run a 1.5 and a two meter awning. Basically one will come out the back of the trailer and one will go out the side, opposite of the side that the, the uh, tent folds out on. Um, it's gonna have a full kitchen in the back. What that means is we're gonna have storage for all of our kitchen gear, we're gonna have a collapsible camp stove um, that's either going to be propane or some sort of solid fuel or, or, or something. The back gate of the trailer will fold out and become a table and we're going to have a kind of uh, a Dometic style fridge freezer um, off-road like one of those cooler freezers. Um, and I'm going to definitely have hot water on board. We're going to run probably a 21 gallon uh, water tank underneath and I'm gonna have a propane heated uh, water heater on board and I'm gonna figure out some way that I can shower. Um, I'm not particularly sensitive but depending on where I'm at it, I do need to have a little bit of privacy for that so we're gonna kind of build something to make make sense for that. Um, the trailer itself is gonna sit on 35 inch tires with a custom uh, kind of axle setup so that basically the idea is that this trailer should go anywhere my gently modified 4x4 truck will go today and a lot of the places that my future 4x4 project may be able to go. Um, to help with that, I'm going to build my own version of the Max Coupler, which is a three-way articulating hitch. And that will be one of the episodes I'll show you guys how to build one of those for yourself. Because that way it allows the trailer and the vehicle to articulate in this axis, articulate in this axis, and then also rotate uh, in relation to each other. Which means that you can pretty much take it anywhere you want. Uh, and as long as the trailer is pretty stable, it's not going to flip over following the truck through some kind of uh, rocks and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to do an all steel construction. Uh, we're going to weld um, the base. Uh, and frame together, uh, skin it and steel. Um, the target weight fully loaded is gonna be sub 2,000 pounds. Uh, ideally, I'd like to be somewhere around the 1500 mark, but uh, to me, any my truck and any vehicle that I plan on owning that's gonna be pulling this trailer will handle a 2,000 pound load. Although, to be fair, pretty much any vehicle on the road, with a few exceptions, can tow 2,000 pounds, uh, I'll say, safely um, if the vehicle is configured properly. Um, you know, I wouldn't, a 2,000 pound trailer, I wouldn't necessarily hesitate pulling behind like, 
you know, uh, um, a Volkswagen Jetta or something, that you'd be totally fine. Um, so again, I like to go off roading. That's the main reason for this. I want to be able to go to Big Bend and uh, go to like Wolf Creek Park and up to Hidden Falls and stuff like that and camp there overnight and basically take the trailer, set up as a base camp, and then go take my rig and go off roading while the trailer stays there. But conversely, um, I do plan on uh, at some point making a trip out west. Um, probably two separate trips. Uh, one, I do want to go see Moab. I want to go wheeling in Moab, and I want this trailer to be a part of that. And uh, the other, my other thing that I really want to do is I really want to run the Rubicon. Um, and when I have a vehicle that's capable of doing that, I'm going to use this trailer to kind of go camping and stuff like that. So the trailer is going to be able to see some miles. It needs to be comfortable for me to live out of. Um, it needs to be reasonably quick to put up and set, uh, take down. Um, it's going to have a full kitchen. It's going to have um, propane. It's going to have hot water and cold water. Um, it's going to have some sort of shower system, maybe just a shower tent with like some lines. Uh, the plan is definitely to incorporate uh, dual batteries, uh, a solar uh, battery charger system um, so I can, you know, get some solar power while I'm, I'm out and about. Uh, and in general, the trailer needs to be fully stocked and self-sufficient. The idea uh, with that is, as much like the box truck, I want to be able to come home after work on a Friday night, for instance, you know, grab the dog and hook up to the back of my truck and drive four hours down to North Padre, for instance, because I know all of my camping gear is already in the trailer. Um, so that kind of covers all of the big features of the build. Um, these, I'm not going to lock myself down to a schedule. I got a little bit in, in trouble uh, previously when I was on YouTube trying to stick to a schedule. Um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, this time around, videos are just going to come out as they come out. Um, but I'm hoping, uh, this video is being filmed right at the end of, of February 2019. Um, I'm hoping to be completed by mid-April 2019 because I'd really like to be able to take the trailer out a little bit before it gets super hot here in Texas. So, with all of that said, uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. Again, if you want to see further updates, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave me a comment. Um, also, feel free to send me an email. Uh, I get a fair number of people who send me emails about bikes or projects or whatever. Um, I do my best to respond to everybody, including everybody in the comment section on YouTube. Uh, and because uh, I'm a big believer that a lot of uh, a lot of information, especially in people who build things on the internet, gets lost. And all of these things are being built in real life. I'm using all of them in real life. And so, uh, for me to be a good YouTuber, to be a good engineer, I should be able to pass that information on to you. Um, the other thing that we're going to do that's a little different that I haven't seen on, on too many other YouTube channels is starting with this video, in the description, there will be a public, if you follow the link, Google Drive Excel sheet. In that Excel sheet, I will provide um, prices and affiliate links, Amazon affiliate links, for all of the things that I bought for this trailer. Um, so, because those affiliate links, um, I get a, a decent amount of revenue, enough that it's worth it for me to do this. Um, from those affiliate links, from your guys' support, and I really do appreciate that, but I wanna keep an accurate build log that is public, so you guys can see exactly what it costs to build something like this. I'm not gonna hide anything from you. There's no sponsored deals, there's no crap. Everything will be, you know, I'm gonna find the best deals I can on stuff, um, but it's all gonna be documented and linked and detailed in this um, Google Docs spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet will be updated. Basically, as I buy stuff, I will add it to the Google Docs spreadsheet. Um, so there'll be stuff added all the time. So as new episodes come out, as we get further in the build, it's going to get more and more and more populated. And I think it'll be a good resource for a lot of people. Because these adventure trailers are super popular now. And there's a number of companies here in the States 
that make them uh, anything from knockdown kits like the Smitty Built one, um, like I said, all the way up to custom twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar rigs, you know, that are hand built by some guy in the middle of Ohio or whatever uh, for your uh, using pleasure. Um, my target budget for this is four thousand dollars fully equipped. So that includes the fridge, the tent, the tires, lock, stock, and smoke and barrel. Um, and that is what we're shooting for. That is what I'm planning on, on sticking to. Um, and so here in the next couple of days, I'm going to place orders for the tent because there's a month long wait on that. And I'm going to place orders for the axle and start buying some steel and getting the garage kind of ready to house this bigger project. Um, and I hope you guys will be there with me for the ride. Thanks for watching. Peace.